Bush you meet. Um, I hope you're having an enjoyable science week. Um, my name is Dr. Tommy Thornton. I'm an intensive care doctor up here in Manchester. I've been asked to answer some of your questions about being a doctor. What is the difference between medical school and university? Uh, there's no difference at all. So once you go to study medicine at university, uh, you will be at medical school. How do you achieve the doctor status in medicine? I don't think there is such a thing as doctor status anymore. Um, once you've got your degree, you become a, a junior doctor. And after a year of practicing, you will then get your full license from the General Medical Council or GMC. If I wanted to specialise in a particular area, for example, podiatry or immunology, how would I get there? Could you outline the pathway? So podiatry is a separate um, course at university and Hannah is going to talk to you about that later. Um, after you've completed your first two years as a foundation doctor, you then choose which specialty you'd like to go into. That uh, specialty you will start training in and then you can choose uh, you then apply for your registrar, registrar training, which is usually about five to seven years, and then after that, uh, you become a consultant in whichever specialty you choose to be. What does an intensive care doctor do daily? So, um, intensive care doctors have a variety of different roles within the hospital. Um, you look after the patients on the intensive care unit, so your morning might start with ward rounds, and um, reviewing all the patients that have either come in the night before or um, who've been there for a few days or longer. Um, you also attend the emergency calls around the hospital, so if pa patients have had a cardiac arrest where the heart has stopped beating, uh, you'll go and help the team out um, to try and resuscitate the patient. Uh, and then you'll be referred patients from different uh, sectors of the hospital, usually A&E, uh, and you'll go and review them to see if they require organ support, which is what intensive care doctors do. What does specialising in a particular area involve? Once you qualify to specialise in an area, does it involve constant research? So as I said before, you, you will complete your foundation year training and then you will apply for core training. After core training, you go into registrar training within your specialty uh, and then you will have five to seven years at that level before you become a consultant after doing some exams. Um, there are lots of different things you can do in medicine. Research is one of them. And there is a specific training stem which allows you to do research as part of your doctor training. Um, however, not all doctors uh, need to take part in research. You can do lots of other things such as teaching or carrying out uh, quality improvement projects, audits, um, and there's a huge variety of other things you can do. It doesn't always necessarily mean that you have to do research. What subjects are most recommended for GCSE and A-levels if you want to go for medicine? So medicine is very uh, science-based, so it's always worthwhile bearing that in mind when you're making your choices for both GCSE and A-level. Um, maths is also extremely useful, so if you're able to do the two or three sciences and maths at, at GCSE, that's, um, that'd be great. Um, but what I would say is bear in mind that um, you need to also choose subjects that you really enjoy. So um, choose the sciences, that's always a good place to start, but uh, make sure you also choose subjects that you're going to enjoy doing for that period of time. What is the one cool thing you've seen in your career to date? Um, so I've seen quite a few cool things actually. I think the most, most recently the coolest thing I've seen was um, discharging one of our long-term patients who suffered with uh, coronavirus. And after a really long and difficult stay on the intensive care unit, he. He made it through to be discharged and uh, the nurses and the doctors and everyone else who looked after him on the intensive care all lined the corridors and clapped him out and that was probably the coolest thing I've seen. What has it been like working in ICU with coronavirus? Coronavirus has brought lots of different challenges to the health service. I think some of the What has it been like working in ICU with coronavirus? So coronavirus has brought a lot of challenges uh, for the health service um, and uh, particularly intensive care. The most difficult thing has been treating uh, patients for a disease that we knew very little about um, at the start of the pandemic back in February, March of 2020. Um, we have very limited uh, evidence-based research as to how to treat the disease. Uh, compared to lots of different medical conditions that we know how to treat, such as, say, heart failure or kidney failure, for example. 
that's made it difficult communicating with families about our plans and what we're trying to do with patients. Um, and also, as we know, coronavirus has a very high mortality rate. Um, so that also has a, a big impact on all the different um, all the different workers that work inside the intensive care. And that's not just doctors, that's nurses, that's physiotherapists, that's the cleaners, that's the catering staff, that's everybody. It has an impact on, on all those different people. Could you describe one moment where you felt you made a difference? Oh, that's a good question. So these moments come few and far between, really, um, in uh, in medicine. I think one time where I felt like I really had made a difference wasn't actually in helping cure someone. Um, it was a patient who was very, very poorly and who had come into hospital on a, on a Sunday night and unfortunately had had a bleed on the brain. And even though we, we tried the best we could to treat the patient, um, they weren't going to survive. I think... It's very easy to see medicine as a, a, a career where we cure people and we make people better all the time. We also look after people at the end of their life. Um, and this particular patient had family members scattered across uh, Europe. Uh, we made contact with them very quickly and we actually managed to get them uh, to the northwest of England to see their relative before they passed away. I think that was probably uh, a time where I made a real difference because I was at the, the centre of helping coordinate that. Um, and I think the family appreciated um, that, that last period of time with their relatives. So probably that. What do you say when they ask you what hobbies you have in an interview? Just be honest. Um, if you are someone who enjoys reading books, if you're someone who uh, enjoys playing music, if you're someone who's really sporty, just say what you like to do. What they like to see in an interview is how you can relate that to being a doctor. And usually that's through good communication, team working, being able to work under pressure. If you're able to link your hobby um, or activity and incorporate all those different aspects of what being a doctor will be, um, that is going to score you probably most points in the interview. So it really doesn't matter what it is, but it's got to be uh, relatable to the life of, uh, and, and the character uh, characteristics they're looking for as a doctor. What extracurricular activities do universities of medicine look for? Uh, again, I think the university offers many, many different clubs, uh, sports clubs, music clubs, uh, other interests. I don't think it necessarily matters what you do. Again, it, you've got to relate that to how would you um, slot into uh, the community of university. So again, you've got to think about how it's improved your communication skills, team working skills, um, how it's made you a more of a well-rounded person. Uh, and that's going to, again, score you most points at interview uh, at university as well. For the work experience, will be working at a charity or library look good on a resume? Uh, of course, these, these questions, there's a similar theme with these questions. So again, it doesn't really matter what work experience you have, but it's about um, how that is going to uh, make you a more well-rounded person. How, is that going to, how are you going to draw on those experiences? Uh, to use them uh, as a junior doctor or a medical student. Um, it's always worthwhile while trying to get some medical experience as well, so it's really good that if you are working in a charity uh, or charity shop, um, that's excellent, and there's lots of different things you can talk about there. Um, but it's always worthwhile to make sure you have something clinical uh, on your applications as well. It shows commitment to uh, you wanting to come or apply to become a doctor. What would you want to be if you were not a doctor? Uh, probably an astronaut, but I'm too tall. <laughs> How long does it take to progress in medicine? So medicine is a career of lifelong learning. So um, you will be continually doing examinations and uh, progressing to the next stage in your training. And it depends what kind of doctor you become. Um, so let's take GP for example, you would do either four to six years of medical school and then you do your two years as a foundation doctor and then you'll apply to GP training, which is another three years as a, a specialist registrar. So within about five years or so, um, you would then become a GP consultant. If you were doing uh, a surgical specialty, for example, it might be longer than that. So you do two years of foundation, two years of core training and then five to seven years um, as a uh, registrar before you become a consultant. So it can be 10 years, around 10 years or maybe a bit more.